The much-debated expropriation of land bill was adopted by the National Assembly on Wednesday after 14 years of dialogue, consultations and debate. The amendment of the bill was initiated in 2008 and has, been, uh, has seen rather three other attempts to have it adopted to replace the apartheid legislation. In the current draft, expropriation is only permitted for public purposes and in the public interest, as stated in Section 25 of the Constitution. Uh, joining us to help us make sense of the latest development as director and head of land reform, restitution and tenure practice at Worksman's Attorneys, Bule Mabasa. Thank you very much for availing yourself this morning. Three attempts later and it has been adopted. Has it been worth it? Um, I think, yes. If you ask me whether or not we needed an expropriation bill that is aligned with the Constitution, the answer is yes. You will recall that we already have an Expropriation Act in place. That was an act that was um, a 1975 act. And so the 1975 act did not have the kind of constitutional um, um, checks and balances. It was a bill that did not have the constitutional framework where, um, you know, if your land is being expropriated, you could have your side of the story or you could challenge it in court or you could challenge dispensation. So we've sat here with the constitution that is 19, um, that was uh, promulgated in 1997. However, the Expropriation Act of 1975 was not amended up until now. Sure. Um Please let's just deal maybe with two definitions before we move on with the constitution, um, with the conversation. When we say restitution, what are we talking about? And redistribution, what are we talking about? <clears throat> I think maybe let me start with expropriation. Um, expropriation is a concept, as a tool that is used by governments the world over when governments need to uh, buy, acquire land for a public uh, purpose or in the public interest. That includes things like a power line, a school, a hospital. And in the case of South Africa, we have expropriation that is required for land reform purposes. In other words, to use um, expropriation as a tool to fast track land reform. So that is expropriation. Um, it is usually um, t uh, tied with compensation. The compensation models are what differs across the world. Then when we talk about restitution, restitution is a system where if you are able to prove that you were dispossessed of land after 19 June 1913, and there was no compensation that was paid, and that uh, that that land dispossession happened in the uh, because of an apartheid law, then you are able to submit land claims, and the burden of proof of sub of 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 proving whether or not you were dispossessed, dispossessed of land lies with the land claimants. So that's the restitution process, and it's usually spoken of um, as land claims. When you talk about redistribution, redistribution is also governed in the constitution, and that is where you don't need to prove a, a, a land claim or land disposition. That's where you need to show that you have a need for land. And that's where in South Africa currently, we don't yet have legislation that governs how people who need land, whether it's for commercial, agricultural, residential purposes, can go about getting land. So far in South Africa, what we've done in the last two decades is that the Department um, of Land Reform and Development, they introduce policies that are internal policies that determine, you know, how land is released. But those, but those uh, policies are not in the public domain and they don't have the benefit of having gone through a legislative process um, to explain it. So redistribution is where in my view, there has been the greatest uh, challenges and the greatest failures because we don't have legislation that governs how redistribution of land should, should, should occur. Hmm. Uh, just help us with this then, maybe, please. How then will South Africans be able to measure the effectiveness of this bill that has been adopted? So the expropriation, so, so remember, the expropriation bill, as I said, expropriation has, already, has always happened. Um, pre- and post-apartheid. However, what this new expropriation bill introduces, it introduces the concept of being expropriated without any compensation, so in other words, for nil compensation. But it also tries to set up those 
instances when meal compensation will be will be allowed. And, you know, they talk of land that is held for speculative reasons. So in other words, where if you're in an entity, you help you hold land, you have no use on it, you're probably holding it because um, it's going to acquire, it's going to increase in value uh, or abandoned land, for example. It actually just makes way in order to enable the state to expropriate without compensating compensation in those particular instances. The difficulty that arises um, is the fact that the Constitution as it stands right now, as it reads, it does not allow expropriation with zero compensation. What the Constitution envisages, it envisages that when expropriation happens, there are various factors that must take into account, but you cannot exclude compensation completely. So that compensation that is, uh, uh, that is envisaged as part of our con uh, constitution is that expropriation can happen at less than market value. But certainly in my reading, um, and some other academics and scholars have also commented on this, that currently our, com our constitution expropriation model envisages some level of compensation. So it is likely, in my, in, in my assessment, that there's going to be quite a lot of contestation and probably even um, legal disputes mm. that arise because you cannot have secondary legislation such as a, an act of parliament that is at odds with the primary legislation such as the constitution. So if the constitution had envisaged that expropriation can happen by zero compensation, then it, the, the expropriation bill would not be, um, would, would, uh, with it trying to have instances where the zero compensation wouldn't be um, problematic. But I think we're going to, and we must anticipate that this issue is not going to, that the expropriation bill as it stands is not going to um, necessarily, you know, kind of uh, remain as is and uh, litigation is likely to ensue. To your point, we are understanding that the Freedom Fight Plus leader, uh, Peter Groenewald, has already indicated that asking that the bill uh, be taken to the Constitutional Court to ensure it passes muster. Um, but when we take a look at response, right, especially in terms of contestation, the Economic Freedom Fighters as well as the Inkata Freedom Party have also uh, rejected this bill. Uh, maybe just going back to your point of more litigation, how long can South Africa still uh, afford to be caught up in this issue and it not being clarified so many years down the line as much as many people would have loved it to be? Yes, I think um, the, 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 you mentioned the, the re, that the, EF, um, the EFF has rejected the bill and uh, the Freedom Front. I think what's important for, for, for people to understand is that the expropriation forms part and parcel of the wider and bigger land reform projects program in South Africa. It is not in itself um, the, the, the tool, the only tool that government can use to deliver land reform. That's the first point. So even if, in my view, we have this litigation that might happen in relation to the wording of the expropriation bill, what is important to understand is that as it stands right now, Nothing prevents the state to expropriate um, land for land reform purposes. The only issue is that the state must be courageous, it must use its current powers, and it must be able to follow the formation in the Constitution that says that market value is not the be-all and end-all in how it's done. So I think we must disabuse ourselves of the idea that every that the, the ultimate resolution of land reform in our country lies in an, an act of parliament such as the expropriation bill. It only forms but a relatively, um, you know, minute part of a bigger whole. There is still issues around insecure tenure. There are still issues around restitution, which I explained earlier, issues around redistribution. And in fact, the way that I see it now, um, and having had, you know, being experienced in this area for 20 years, the area of redistribution where people don't need to prove um, that they were, they were dispossessed of land, that's where the biggest opportunity lies. Because in the redistribution, that's where people and governments and society can come into a social pact around who needs land, where is, does, where is land needed and for what purposes. And so far, the only move that has been made 
along that is that we've got a, a, a policy on beneficiary and selection allocation process that is meant to guide our South African approach around who needs land. But I think it's not, it doesn't go far enough. I think we do need legislation that will go through an act of parliament, that will go through public participation on a wider scale. That, that I believe that that's where our social um, cohesion and a social compact will move us forward. Um, given the challenges in, in restitution of people not being able to prove their claims, of the, the land claimants being old people who, who die even before they see the land. And so um, away from expropriation, we have many other opportunities in our country where we can deliver the land reform project outside of just focusing merely on the expropriation aspects as, as, as one of the tools that government can use. Director and Head of Land Reform, Restitution and Tenure Practice at Worksman's Attorneys, Bulelwa Mabasa. Uh, she's also on the President's Advisory Panel on Land Reform and author of My Land Obsession. Thank you, ma'am.